Hey Expats and Travelers, I'm Kaylee with Expats Everywhere and I am on a trip around continental Portugal with Josh, of course, Amy and G, two new team members, our baby girl Valencia and our little dog Pincho. Well what are we doing? We are showing you the different regions and if you could actually live there. We break down things like the cost of living, traveling around, what to do, all that fun stuff. So in this video we are specifically talking about Beja and you have to watch because Josh goes on this random solo adventure that he finds something great. We show you the streets, the food, all that great stuff. So take a look, see how much it would cost, and join Alantasia with us. All right, so we took the bus to Beja. The, the bus was a little long. Uh, I think it was supposed to be around three hours or under three hours. It was a little longer than that. We got it at 8.15. We kind of made the bus late by a few minutes, getting our gear on and stuff. I'm just walking Pincho right now. Hello. And the rest of the guys are just next to the bus station here in Beja. Pincho, what do you think? Huh? What do you think? We got this dog over here. We created this uh, this crazy this fort, this fort of bags. It's so it's, it's so much gear. It's our first day here in Beja. We're just spending a couple days because it's small, but we're just out exploring right now, kind of just getting lost in the windy streets, and then tomorrow we'll have a bit more of a game plan of what to actually see. All right, so if you don't know, uh, Beja is very famous for their castle. So we're here at the castle. Uh, let's head up, let's go. Now we're gonna break down how much money we spent in this region, and we were there for 10 days. So on accommodations, we spent 614.70 euros. That was for two nights in Beja and eight nights, staying about 45 minutes to the east of Evora. For groceries, we spent 268.40 euros. That was for four adults, and of course for Sia, who practically eats like an adult. More stairs. Here we go. You know, I would not be breathing so hard if it wasn't for this mask. Hi. Eating out, we spent 261 euros, and that was 11 different occasions, but this is for eating and drinking out. We'll put all of the more detailed breakdown of this in the description section below if you guys want to have a look. There's Kaylee and Sia. City. I'm proud of the city. Sweet. Made it to the top. I am gonna go back down and let Kaylee come up here. I'll watch Sia and she can have some fun up here. Beautiful view. You guys gotta make it here to Beja. It was actually one level higher, so I made it. Although, there's this and that. But I can see it, so yeah, it's not that bad. Enjoy the view. All right, so what do you guys think so far? Beja. Oh, wow, Amy. What are you um, it's nice. It's so quiet, though. Honestly, I can basically hear my echo and we're outside. Like, it's that quiet. But, yeah, it's really cool. I like the castle. It's cool. Yeah, yeah, hands down. That is definitely probably the nicest castle I've ever seen in real life. <laughs> and this is the guy that lives in England. Yeah, yeah, that is true. We actually do have quite a beautiful castles in our country, actually. <laughs> but, no, here is beautiful. Definitely, I would come here again. And again. Gee, is it real? It's a painting. It's not real. <laughs> That's like an illusion of what I'm doing. <laughs>
people have asked us in the comment section or our live Q&As about telecom here in Portugal and how to do things like banking while abroad, two-factor authentication, running a small business while overseas, or even being a remote worker. So when Zadarma, a virtual phone system, reached out to us, we were naturally curious about how this could solve our viewers' problems. We jumped on the phone with them and Elena explained how their virtual numbers work so you could be living in Portugal but look like you're living in, let's say, Pittsburgh. If you think you'll need a virtual number living overseas or you're just curious to see what they can offer, then you can check the link in the description below. Okay, so I'm going to be 100% honest. Uh, I've been walking around inside the historic city center and it just seems like... There's more going on to Beja than, than meets the eye. So I'm on a mission to head to a craft beer place that's outside of the city center. And this place already feels different. So you got to get out of the historic city center and you'll get a feeling that there's, there's like more of like a normal kind of town life. I mean, oh, I don't know how to put it. There's like an old town feel to the historic city center. Whereas I think outside of the historic city center, this little circle, it's going to feel more normal. It's going to feel like more familiar, contemporary Portuguese type of lifestyle. So let's go see if I can find this craft beer place. So I'm now walking through an industrial park. It's not the worst industrial park I've ever walked through in my life. Actually, it's probably one of the better ones. There's a, a walking path and I just have a sinking feeling that, uh, Apple Map and Google Map have let me down. This place is probably not gonna be open and I'm not gonna get that craft beer. But uh, I'm gonna soldier on. It says I've got eight more minutes to walk. Let's go. Okay, well this plot just thickened. Um, I, I went, they're closed. However, I stopped by this place called Bifanas do Marinho. And como, como falar? Como falar este lugar? Bifanas do Marinho. Bifanas do Marinho. Isso. Isso? Perfeito. I'm here at Bifanas do Marinho, and they, they, they're telling me that the place is, is closed, but this guy just popped out of nowhere and said that uh, some guys are going to come back and open it up. So hopefully I'll be able to get in there, show you all, and uh, try some beers out. But until then, a little super vibe. Oh, Vriada, Musakalo. America, da America? Da America. America with Grande. Drink here, man. He's the boss in, the, in their house. He's the drug guy. The, 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 the drug guy. I'm the uh, maintenance. Uh, the maintenance man. Yeah. Yes. All right. <laughs> maintenance. The drinking you know, uh, it's a little bit busy because we are working with the machines and everything. Even in the flag of the city, it's the bull, the head of the bull. It's a word from Alentejo. It means like uh, someone that it's not a bit crazy, you know? Okay. Uh, but it's from Alentejo, the word. And the bull and the snake, it's like an old legend that a long, long time ago, it, it was a little village, Beja, and uh, there was a, a snake, a big snake, were eating people, all the, the cows and everything, and then they decided to poison a bull. And the bull fight with the snake, and then the snake eat the bull, so it was poison, so the snake dies, and more or less, the, quickly, the, the story is, is this. Lesson learned, if you're not a chancer, you don't have great experiences like that. That was great. That was great. Poco preto. Just a swanging. Dogfish soup. Dogfish soup. You love that fish, don't you? Yeah, my G. My G is, wow. is having some. I should have chicken. That is beautiful, honestly. Oh, just loves everything about this. <laughs> All right, guys, so we came here via bus, and now it's time to head to Evra via train. I'll show you guys that in just a sec. We're in a taxi right now. Um, no, no Uber, but taxi, so it's all good. Five 
a taxi ride from our place here in Beja to the train station that we're catching to Evra. And funny enough, the train is only 450 euro for a little over an hour, but our taxi for five minutes was about 850. <laughs> what are you gonna do? There's no Uber here, so it is what it is. Travel was a little high at 509.04. This is for a car rental and the gas. Gas is not cheap here in Portugal. We also spent money on a bus traveling around, the train, and taxis. And remember, this region does not have Uber, so we had to do taxis. Our entertainment bill was actually a lot higher than when we were in the Algarve. So we spent 150 and 49 cents on a wine tasting, an olive oil tasting, and then our entrance to Chapel of Bones. I think in the Algarve, there was a lot more to do that was free, so we didn't actually have to spend money on entertainment. But here, there were a little more of the excursion type things that we definitely recommend spending money on. We are officially packed in here and the car is shouting at us to all have our seatbelts on. This is, uh, this is stuff. We thought we were gonna do two trips. We probably should be doing two trips, but we're gonna try it in one. We'll see how it works out. So we're about 15, 20 minutes into our drive. The uh, the weight of our cargo is weighing heavy on my legs. G, how you doing back there? <laughs> Can hardly see you. <laughs> Amy. <laughs> Amy, how you doing? I'm doing great. I'm and what's great. what's Sia up to? Drops, no. <laughs> okay. Uh, have you guys ever done a road trip like this? Uh, probably not this far. Would you say that it's nicer to travel by train, bus, or car at the moment? Um, probably train. What was that, Sia? <laughs> Kaylee, how are you feeling about this? Fine, it's easy driving. Uh, I mean, we were kind of out in the country. Yeah. And you don't have anything on you right now. <laughs> Well, which which should she shouldn't have anything on her yeah. because well she's the driver okay. all right i've got to get off to navigate yeah. and our utilities 6521 that was to top up our phones and to top up the wi-fi which will last 30 days so grand total what are we at kaylee 10 days grand total for 10 days in the alentasia region is 1868.84 euros all right, guys, so we've come to that point in the episode where we need to answer the question, would we expat that? Would you expat Beja? I would say yes, I would expat Beja, but maybe not long term, not for the full year. I think it gets really hot in the summer, so I wouldn't want to do that, but it might be nice in the winter. It's small. they got a lot going on. The people are really friendly. So yes, I'd expat that. And you? 100% I'd expat that for a short amount of time. Mm. It just got windy here. <laughs> Uh, yeah, for a short amount of time, I would definitely expat Beja for the same reasons that you said. There's an amazing park there in, in the center of Beja that we could easily take Valencia to and play with her on the regular, and that would be great. So yeah, I would expat Beja, but I do know it is small and there's not a whole lot going on there. But it'd it's, be fun. It's good that we're uh, generally on the same page for these things. <laughs> for sure. It makes it easy to move with you. Yeah. If you want to check out information like this of other cities around Portugal, then make sure you look at this playlist here. Remember, you guys voted on this, but if you want more voting power, then go to our Patreon page. Now let's get moving.